Praise God, I'm glad y'all are here this morning. Are you counting on God? Praise the Lord, we get excited about that because he's counting on you. Amen? Are you loving on God? Praise the Lord, he's loving on you. Are you excited about God? Now think about that one a minute. Are you really excited about God? Just like the people in the video there. He's real excited about you. Do you know that God could spread the gospel to every creature on earth immediately? With a snap of a finger, he could do that. But he doesn't. Why is that? He wants you to do it. He's counting on you. Amen? He could feed all the hungry people just instantly. Big buffet, biggest buffet you ever saw, right? But he doesn't. Why? He's counting on you to do that. And he's given you everything that you need to do these works. Amen? Praise God. We need to get excited about it. There needs to be a sense of urgency about it. Now I'm going to do a little arithmetic this morning. Not that this will be arithmetic class. That's... That's about as far as I ever got. I, when they started adding numbers and letters, I struggled at that. But I got the, the other four down. First, we'll do addition. When you add yourself to Jesus Christ, and the reason I say when you add yourself to him, because people used to tell me all the time, they'd come to me and say, Daryl, my life's a shambles. I need to get Jesus in my life. And I said, no, you need to get your life in Jesus you're looking at it the wrong way. So when you add yourself to Jesus Christ, the first thing you get is the gospel. Amen? The good news. You know, I, I was, yesterday morning I was thinking about this sermon because you try not to overdo it, you know, think about it too much. And I just started praying. And I prayed the whole sermon. I was in prayer for about 30 minutes. And the Lord revealed something to me. The Holy Spirit revealed something to me. Because I always say the scriptures are not understood, they're revealed. If you're having trouble understanding it, get in prayer, say, Spirit, work through me, open my eyes to this, and it will. So he revealed something to me. He said, Daryl, all those miracles that Jesus performed, those are symbolic of who Jesus is. If you think about the miraculous catch of fish that he caught, and the feeding of the 5,000 people with just, you know, a little uh, boy's lunch. Really is what it was, it was, a young man's lunch. He fed 5,000 people and picked up 12 basketfuls of leftovers. When you think about that, Jesus provides. Amen? Isn't that great? Now you think about some of the other miracles that he performed. The crippled people walked. The blind people could see. The lepers, they were all cleansed of their ailments. Jesus heals. Amen? Now what's the third one? When he calmed the sea and the storms, the winds and the waves obeyed him and he cha changed the water into wine, Jesus changes things. So if you don't get anything else out of this today, just think about that. In your life, Jesus provides. Jesus heals anything in your life. Not just your physical ailments, your mind too. He'll heal your mind. He'll even heal your past in the way you look at it. He heals and he also changes everything. Jesus changes everything. Now that's the gospel, amen? And you need to be added to that gospel. And think about what a great leader we have in Jesus. He's willing to sacrifice his very physical life and his spiritual life too for this, your sins, for each of your sins. Dennis, your sins. Ray, yours. I won't pick out anybody else. Some of y'all may have more sins you want to talk about. I'm, I'm not sure. But he's, he did it for everyone. There's no, sinner, there's no sin greater than him. 
His sacrifice covers all sins, and He did that for us. What a leader. Amen? And so the third thing that you get when you add yourself to, the gospel, uh, to Jesus Christ in the gospel and the sacrifice is you get the way. Because He said, I am the truth. How many of you want the truth? Oh, yeah, absolutely, about everything, right? He said, I am the life. How many of you want a meaningful life? It's in Jesus. And he said, I am the way. And a, a life in a way that is a purpose-driven way. Amen? I might have stole that from a, from a purpose-driven life, isn't it, Ray? From the book title. But you're adding, you're gaining all those things. Now, who of you doesn't want that? Amen? Some people put it off. They know it's the right thing to do and they wait and wait and I always go, no one has ever told me that they regretted becoming a Christian. Have you ever heard that? I've never heard that in my life because it's a wonderful, bountiful thing. But once you become a Christian, you got some subtractions that you got to do. That's the second part. We added ourselves to the gospel to the sacrifice and to the way of life, to Jesus Christ. But the Bible tells us we need to take some things away, right? And the first thing you need to realize is that, as John said, he said, we know we are of a God and the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. No, that's not a word we use a lot, sway. I know you probably didn't. Wasn't driving around Tuesday saying, you know, I wonder what the sway is today, you know. <laughs> but the sway actually means control. It's under the control, the influence. And I, I got to thinking about that. kind of means like when you get caught up into something. And the, the world is good about getting you caught up in something, isn't it? You know, it's kind of like when you see a leaf out there in the yard and it gets caught up in the wind. And it doesn't really have any direction. Or a, a, a stick gets thrown out in the water and it's in the current and it flows. So you're in the current flow of the ways of the world. You need to take that away out of your life and follow the rock of the word of God, just like the scripture says. Amen? My hope is in the word of God. Praise the Lord. <coughs> you know... Uh, talking about getting excited about things. We were on our way here, and I said, oh, Brandy, you wore your new shoes you just got yesterday, didn't you? And she said, yeah. She goes, I'm excited about them. <laughs> I said, she says, you know I'm into shoes. <laughs> I said, well, that's good. It's good to be excited about stuff, isn't it? Praise the Lord. But there's some things we don't need to get excited about. We don't get to be pulled into all the lies that the Satan... We've got an enemy. We need to subtract the lies out of our life. And all those times, you know that Satan talks to you in your own voice? Have you ever thought about that? He'll talk to you and say, you can't overcome that. You know, it's like when people tell me, when I first, they said, you're so, you just get up there and start speaking and everything. I said, well, it was hard at first. It was for me, you know. I'm not lying. I dreaded it, you know, but... I was listening to the lies because Satan was saying, you can't do that. You know, you're too nervous. You can't get up there and speak to people. And I thought, well, I can speak and I can get up. So I guess I can get up and speak. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let's get to the truth of the matter. You got to quit believing in the lies. When you're headed home from work and there's some activity that somebody wants you to join, it's a good Christian thing and everything, you say, well, I'm just too tired for that. Are you really? You're going to go home and probably work out or something, you know, <laughs> or work around the house. Don't listen to the lies. you got to subtract that from it. And the very last one and the most important one is get out of the debate. You know, used to when I first started preaching, you know, denominationalism used to have a lot of debates in it. And people would say, Darrell, he wants to debate you about that. I said, I don't debate. And so I met with the guy and he said, uh, you really believe baptism is necessary? And I quoted scripture to him. 
He said, well, I just don't feel like God would eliminate somebody over baptism. And I said, okay. And I quoted another scripture to him. And he said, well, I just don't believe. I don't think God would do that. that. And I thought, you know, I've quoted you all these scriptures and you told me how you felt and how you thought and what you think and, and how you believe. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what I think. Like Jesus said, for it is written. You know, as I was thinking about this, I thought the devil, if you think about it, he tries to get everybody in that current flow, in the sway, under control, he tells all these lies about, you know, things. He's going to deliver things to you that he never intends to deliver, right? He's going to t make things look this something look this thing look like something that it's not. And I got to thinking. I said, man, he's about the best politician there is, isn't he? <laughs> you know, <laughs> some of you'd already thought that, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to knock those people. There's good statesmen in there, but there are just politicians too. But that's what you're doing. Get out of the debate. Now, on the next one, what is it? We do addition, subtraction. What's the third one? Multiplication. See, y'all were raised the same way I were, taught the same way I was. You know, we are very blessed at this congregation right here, talent-wise. You think about it. I've worked with some song leaders that weren't very good song leaders. And that crowd was not excited at, at the end of the song service when the sermon got started. This choir, like you said last week, Mark, and Tom do an excellent job. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, I've also worked with some people, with some media people that weren't very good. And you were waiting for a scripture that's a, uh, to pop up on the screen or something to come about or another video, and that's when you're sitting there, you learn how to ad lib, right? <laughs> you got to tell something. Davis does an incredible job. There's hardly a blimp. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And look at all the talent we got, all these ladies that do all this good work. And if I leave somebody out and you get offended, we'll go home and pray about that. You know? <laughs> But, but all you ladies do a wonderful job. And then they drag their husbands along with them sometimes too to do, do good works. Praise the Lord. We're a talented people. And we got a preacher here that I just love. And he's preaching the gospel. Remember I told you a while back when we started the Jesus Feeds Us deal. And I, and I read out of Malachi to you about you fill up my house with food and watch the blessings all rain down on you. Now we're feeding people. Our house is full of food. If somebody needs something, they get it, right? And our preacher is preaching the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's doing a series right now, every book, talking about how highlighting the gospel out of those books. When you do that, God will bring the people in. Amen? That's, that's where you, that was an amen right there. But, yeah. but really, think about it. Praise the Lord. We're very talented because in Acts 6 and verse 7, Luke tells us, he said, the gospel was spread and the number of the disciples increased, multiplied greatly. Multiplied. So if we want to multiply, we spread the word. We spread the gospel. And you don't have to be talented to do that. If you can hand somebody a Bible, you can do it. Praise the Lord. If you can hand them a refrigerator magnet with the fruits of the Spirit on it, you're spreading the gospel. Praise the Lord. How many of you can do that? Everybody's got their hands up on that one, right? We want to spread the gospel. We will multiply. But just realize this when you do that, when you're spreading the gospel. You're just supposed to spread the good news about Jesus Christ. You're not supposed to save people. That's not your deal. They're convicted. A young lady told me a while back, I said, you ever think about being baptized? She says, well, just every day now, thanks to you. And I said, 
Well, don't thank me. <laughs> don't thank me. That's the Holy Spirit working. The Holy Spirit's who convicts you of your, your, where you need to be, right? And Jesus is the one that saves. Amen? So our work is not a job because you get paid for jobs. We're in a family business, remember? Yes, we're in a family business. We're working for the family. Our job is to spread the good news. And we spread it through spread, giving out the word, or we spread it through giving out food, or we spread it by visiting somebody that's sick or lonely or depressed. We do our work in the Lord by spreading the gospel. And then the Holy Spirit and Jesus do their work in conviction and saving. Amen? Now, I, I, I think y'all are an exciting crowd to be around. I really do. And uh, the young men that do the work in here and the older ones that do the work and, and all the things that, that have been done, I think it's just an exciting place to be. And I think we need to feel a, a sense of urgency about it. I don't want you to be uncomfortable. I know some preachers say that. I'm going to make you uncomfortable this morning. And, you, and they can, right? But just feel that sense of urgency about, I just need to be a part of the work, and a part of something good happening. We're getting all kinds of compliments on our building, building right now. That didn't take long, did it? Somebody said that uh, yesterday. said, I drove by y'all's building. Sure looks nice. Praise the Lord. Who did that? God did it. Amen? <laughs> Anytime somebody asks you who does something, just tell them, God. They asked me this week, what are you going to preach about? Jesus. It's what I told them every week I was preaching for 13 years from the pulpit. They said, what's your sermon about? Jesus. Every time I'd answer the same thing because that's what it is. That's what's important, right? The church is a good thing, but I don't read any sermons in the Bible about the church. When they preached, when, when Paul and Peter and all of them preached, they preached about Jesus the Christ, the Messiah is here, the good news. Amen? And the sacrifice, the blood that was shed for you. And it was shed for all of us. And I'll praise God if you're here this morning and you want to become a Christian, you call on the name of the Lord. We'll take your good confession that you believe that He is the Son of God and we'll bury you in baptism this morning. Amen? Amen. Because that's our work. Amen. There's one more quarter to the arithmetic lesson. You remember what it was? Division. And so, well, God doesn't divide. Well, he did a couple of times. If you think about it, he divided the light from the darkness. Amen. Yes, he did. Now, thank God that he did. Because the darkness always tries to invade the light, but the light destroys the darkness. When you walk into a room and it's pitch black, you turn on that light, you don't have to wait five minutes. That light is instant, the speed of light. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. So he divided the light from the darkness, and he also divided the sheep from the goats. Now I hope you're on the sheep side of that don't have anything against goats. I think they're amazing animals. But the Lord was just using that as symbolically to explain some things. I want to be a part of the sheep that follow Jesus, the sheep that he provides for, the sheep that he heals, the sheep that he changes everything about their life. I want to be a part of that. So let's put that in our mind, the division that God only divided twice, the light from the darkness and the sheep from the goats, and let's don't let any division come amongst us. Because when you start to become a church that is prosperous in the gospel and in the word of God, you're getting Satan's attention. And he will definitely come in here and put thoughts in some of our heads that, like, would well, you see him up there when that video was playing? He was singing with it and stuff and everything, you know. <laughs> I thought, well, you know what? I got past all that years ago. Amen? I was at a uh, friend of mine, concrete guy. I'm in construction. He's a concrete contractor. His mother passed away. And I went to the funeral. A lot of us guys did, you know. Went to the funeral, and, he, and they were talking about her, and they said, well, she loved congregational singing, so everybody grab a songbook. I was sitting there with a deacon, 
from the Church of Christ, and he grabbed a songbook, and I did too. And the lady got the, on the piano up there, and she did the introduction, and he just folded up his songbook and laid it aside. And I thought, that's kind of disrespectful, isn't it? At a funeral? And I thought, well, even if I believed that was wrong, she's the one playing the piano, I'm not. All right? Daryl's the one up here singing to a video. You're not. Just do whatever you're comfortable with. It's between you and God. Amen? Can I just get an amen on that? Yeah. So I kept my songbook open and I sang. He looked at me kind of strange, but I'm sure he went back to his congregation, told them all about it. That's okay. I survived it. I'm here today, right? Amen. You know, also one time a guy, about, I guess it was about the turn of the 2000s there, he said, they come over to me and said, Daryl. I said, yeah. They said, they're wearing shorts to church. And I said, yeah, they are. Good observation. Yeah. So, well, I said, uh, I don't like that. And I said, oh, you don't think you should wear shorts to church? And she goes, no, I don't think you should. And I said, well, then if I was you, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> In other words, just leave him alone, right? You take it between you and God, amen? We don't want division. We don't need that. We need to add. We got some subtraction we need to do. We definitely need to multiply, amen? And multiply greatly, as the Bible says. But we don't need any division. The Lord just did that twice and it's done. Amen? So I'm very thankful to be a part of this congregation. And I think we have an extreme amount of talent here just from Philip and Brent and all the young people that, that help us here uh, with Claude, with Mark, with all these ladies that do all this fantastic work, the singers, Davis. Let's just give herself a hand. Amen. God bless you for letting me do this. Well, thank you, Daryl. Daryl reminds me of the Apostle Bartholomew. We probably talk less about Bartholomew than any of the rest of them. We got a good crowd here today, Daryl. But uh, Bartholomew. From historical writers we learn, it's not in the Bible, but we learn that he was crucified upside down. Does that feel comfortable for you, Daryl? And, 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 and on the cross, crucified upside down, you know what he was doing all that time? He was preaching the gospel. He just kept preaching the gospel on and on and on. And the executioner was so frustrated he kept yelling, shut up, shut up, shut up. You think that would stop Daryl? Of course not. You know how they stopped Bartholomew? The executioner, according to historical writers, took a huge ax and chopped his head off. And that's the only thing that stopped him from preaching the gospel. I don't believe anything would stop Daryl from preaching the gospel. Thank you for sharing the gospel. And thank you also for sharing your heart. We got a lot of hurting people in this family this morning. Some have lost very dear relatives and loved ones. Some of you have terrible disease that you're facing and fighting. Let's close with a prayer. Father, we are your family. It, it means so much. We talk about our families and Sometimes the pride that we have in being part of our families. But Father, most of all, we're the family of God. Thank you for being our daddy. Thank you for being our father that loves us so very, very much. Father, we know you're omnipresent. That as we leave here today, you can go into each individual home. That you send your spirit that brings peace and comfort. And we pray for that right now. In Jesus' name, amen.